All right, guys, welcome back. We just got this archery bull back here in the hills of New Mexico. Wanted to make a quick video because a lot of you asked, you know, how do we take care of the meat? How do you get the meat out from where you're hunting to home? And uh, the first part of doing that is cutting it up out here. So as you can see, we've already removed the quarters. We've already done this back strap on the back side. Most of the neck, neck roasts on this side still have a little to do here, but we're going to show you how to remove the back strap. All right, most people would say the back straps are some of the best cuts of meat on a big game animal. The back straps run straight down the spine. Um, there's a back strap on each side. You can see on this side, we've already removed that one. You can see how deep that is and just how much meat is there. But you've got a lot of ribs to work around, some of the spinal cord knots, and uh, we're gonna show you how we like to do it with just a simple small blade knife. All right, we're gonna remove the entire back strap right now. You can see there's a layer of uh, gristle and you know this, uh, I don't know what they call that, but it's not good eating. The meat underneath it is, it's a lot of extra weight, so we're just gonna go ahead and start by just trimming that off real quick. Some people like to leave it on just to keep the meat clean. That does help, but you can still see there's another layer of that underneath. So uh, we're a couple miles back here. We don't want to pack that out. We'll just shave it off real quick. All right, the back strap, it runs from right about up here where the neck meets the shoulders and all the way to this knot. You'll feel it, you'll be able to feel that. So to get it started, I'm gonna run my blade up against the spine. Gonna start peeling that back and just running your blade right against the backbone. Keeping as much meat on there as you can. Once that's released, it, it sure is a lot easier to work with. I might be a little far forward, but better than not enough. I like these little knives because the blades kind of flex and they get around those rib bones. Just be careful. Watch where your fingers are. You can see these tendons right here, they really, once you cut those, it really lets that meat relax, a lot easier to work on. You can see down here, it's hard to tell, but getting to those knots I showed you on the other side, just do your best to trim around those. All right, I've cut down the spine, I'm just about to the bottom of where it connects. Um, I'm gonna start on the other side. You can visually see where it runs, and you can really feel for it. So I'm feeling right here, you can see that there's rib bone, okay? You can, on smaller animals, you can almost peel this off with your hands. Get rid of some of that garbage. See where that separates? That's where you want to start. And just go follow that line, you'll feel it. OK, 
kind of got a swoop in between each rib. You can kind of get your hands down in there and just peel it apart from the ribs. See that? Okay, now here towards the back, it really opens up really wide. You can, again, you can see exactly where it's at and fill it. So just run your blade. You kind of got to separate it off this bone right here. You can feel that. Oh, got, got underneath the ribs right there. See that? Just gonna follow that down. Peeling it back from each individual rib and in between. Just get your knife right down in there. Work your way forward, one rib at a time. All right, what I like to do is get that back end started because it's really deep right there and again, you've got that knot, that bone. Just do your best to run your blade right up against that bone. Save as much of that good meat as possible. You can just see it peel right off the bone right there. Just pulling on it a little bit and the blade is doing the work. All right, you can see I'm just about to the bottom there. i am uh, got a little more work to do on this side, but once you get to the bottom, it really starts to peel out. But like I showed you on the back side, there's those knots. Just gotta work around them. And this meat is so tender, it's almost just peeling right out, but I don't wanna break it. I wanna keep as much meat on as possible. I'm just going to work it slow, one knot at a time. See that pill out? Oh, that's going to be some tender meat right there. Working our way forward, just kind of pulling on it, letting the weight just peel it right off. See that? I mean, I'm not even cutting it. It's melting right out of there. See that all the way to the bones there. Do my best to keep this clean and finish it off. Again, we're probably a little too far forward, so I'm just gonna cut that off right there. Back's feeling it, but there you go, guys. That's how you remove a back strap. Just like the quarters, it's about the same on every big game animal. The smaller animals, that thing will peel right out of there. We're gonna add this to our meat stack we got over here. Let this cool down as much as we can. It's a little sunny right here, but the wind's, wind's been blowing. That's a... Uh, full mature bull elk um, quartered out 
scrap meat, we got flank steaks, the back straps, and everything. If you guys enjoyed that video, if you want to see how to remove the uh, quarters, watch our video on how to remove an elk quarters uh, right here on the Hushin channel. It's hard work, but it's well worth it. Hopefully you guys have a success in your hunt and have fun when you're out there. Be safe and uh, thanks for watching. Again, if you're doing it by yourself, just let that pull against it and just cut it. That's gonna peel right off the back. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> That's why we hunt, let's get the meat. Um, one thing I've been doing lately, 